I'm going to turn the record on now. Um, I'm going to start the meeting, and if people come in, I'll just allow them into the room. So my name is Rebecca. Um, you might know me from Instagram or Facebook or some sort of social media outlet. I have a small practice in New York City. I work primarily with children who have brain-based disorders, including children with Down syndrome, um, cerebral palsy, autis uh, different um, autism. I work with children who have Rett syndrome. I work with children who have different chromosome and genetic disorders. Um, a variety of different students. Um, so I'm going to go through some of the decks that I've used and how I've kind of incorporated them into therapy and then explain to you how you can make these decks too. Um, so these are real life examples and all the decks I used are the decks I created. So that's kind of the point of this meeting um, to show you how I create and you can create decks for your students. If you need any of the decks that are in my boom, boom store, feel free to send me a message with your user ID and I will send you whatever decks you want. I tell that to every speech pathologist because I know we don't have that much time. So my agenda is to explain my boom experience. Um, we can make boops, boom decks together. And then if we have time at the end and if anyone's interested, I'm gonna show you how to use Google Sites, which is by far the best therapy tool and fastest tool that I use right now. Um, so my boom life, since March, 2020, I've given away over 90,000 free boom decks. I spent two weeks watching every single boom YouTube video they produce. My designs are mostly for children that are early intervention age, AAC, and or students with vision challenges. Um, a lot of you know this, I work with a lot of kids who have CVI and cortical vision impairment. I'm also going to do my another master's in um, vision impairment. So I have, I'm gonna be duly certified in speech and vision. So I'm very mindful of a lot of um, different therapies involving um, vision. I create most of my own designs or purchase them as needed. I purchased a few um, things from Etsy here or there, depending on the kids' needs. So here are the do's and don'ts of making a boom deck. Do make and purchase for style decks. Do know your username. Do read reviews. Do know the child's device type that they're going to be accessing the boom card on. Do know if you, if the, you should be modeling for them um, what the correct answers are or if they could actually touch and um, select the screen. If you're on Zoom, I'm gonna show you a trick at the end to help you um, know where the child is um, touching on the screen. Sorry, I'm just letting some people in. Um, be mindful of teletherapy platform capabilities. For example, on Google, I'm sorry, on Teams and Zoom, you can turn on the annotation feature or get screen control, but on others, you can't. Hi. Um, have ways for your students to answer your questions. So a lot of times um, I was working with a graduate student today and we were looking at some decks and she was saying to him, you know, is it one, two, is it the first, second, or third one? And he kept hitting the screen. He didn't really have a way to um, answer our question because we didn't provide him any um, feedback or a way to, you know, either by number or letter or by shape. And then don't waste time making one deck for one case pub and don't publish any copyrighted materials. Um, BMO symbols, I spoke to the um, PRC rep. She said they're totally okay to use as long as you're not selling them. BMO, I think you can buy a um, license to sell them. I think it's $20 a year. Um, so if you're using those. Oops, what happened? Okay. So in terms of buying decks, so this is kind of do it. You, I'm sure a lot of you already know how to do this, but I just wanted to break this down even more for you. So if you buy $3 worth of points, that's 225 points, that's $1.33 for 100 points. So each deck for um, 100 points would equal $1.33. If you spent $98 in the boom store, that would be um, each deck, each 100 points would come out to 98 cents. So in, when I said before, you need to know your username, that way people could send and share cards with you. Your username is right here. It's not automatically generated on boom that you have to create yourself. It's under the user ID, you click on it to create it. Oh, sorry, let me just stop. Hi guys, we're just going over some introductory stuff. Um, okay. So in terms of the store, this is the store that they are on the top where you purchase items. Um, they just added this category two weeks ago for speech therapy. Um, on this category, you could filter for speech therapy topics. Again, this was just added two weeks ago. So a lot of the earlier decks are probably not in that subject area. They're probably in special education if the author hasn't moved them over yet. There's also this like grade thing. Um, obviously there's no early intervention on here. A lot of people have been clicking this uni UNIV thing for universal, but I'm pretty sure it means university. However, I've seen it kind of go both ways. So just something to be mindful of. Right now until June 30th, it's free for you to make as many decks as you want. 
you could sell decks, so work on it now. Um, and then that way you can decide if this is even like something you want to do for yourself. Um, and then you can have up to 200 students in your classroom um, where you can send them decks. You could also make um, other speech therapists your students. So just think about the possibilities of things you could do if you have a team that you're working on. Um, so if you go to this page, here's your library. This is where all of your decks are that you have um, created and um, own or have purchased. You can filter them by folder. So you could add new folders um, over here. For example, here I have um, core words. So I could um, segment these all by core words, speech sounds. And you can also filter by created by me or purchased. So I use this feature a lot since I make a lot of decks. Um, so in terms of setting up your class, so if you go to class over here, here's my classroom. Um, this is my student right here. It's great because it shows how long ago Dylan was active online. So I could see, did you even look at that boom deck I sent you? Was that a waste of my time to send you that boom deck? Like, what's going on here? So this is a great feature for you, for you to know um, what's going on with your students um, in tracking. Um, Anything else I want to share? No, just that this child's username is right here. So it says username. And then if you click on this little blue thing, it'll say password. So if you want to send them their username or password, that's how they log into their um, Boom account. So let's look at some cases. So this little girl's name is Dylan. She's three years old. I trialed LAMP and modified SNAP plus core for her from August to January. Um, we finished her PRC funding packet in January. And in terms of her expressive use for AAC, um, basically from August to February, she was not using her device and I was extremely frustrated. I knew she had the capabilities of using it and I knew she was had some communication frustrations and I was trying my best to get her to use it. And then I kind of had an aha moment, which I wrote about recently in my blog, where I just forgot to give her the 20% fringe words. So I was so focused on giving her all the core words that I just absolutely missed giving her fringe um, the fringe words. So she had no interest in using her device because she didn't see how it could benefit her. Um, so that was kind of like my aha moment. And then since teletherapy, she started mimicking some simple gestures. We got her on four concrete items, four core words, and now she has 100% accuracy on both of those um, eight, um, eight cells. So in terms of limitations for her for boom decks, she can't do anything that's drag and drop. So if there's something that you have to slide with your finger and drop, she's not there yet. Her mom actually sent me a photo today. She like put a sock around her hand to help her isolate her pointer finger because she's really trying to get her to learn how to do like single point, um, single finger movements. Um, and she also needs help moving through things when, when it's done. So all of her decks need to be one hit to submit, meaning as soon as she hits the deck, boom, something will happen. She can't do multiple steps on multiple, um, multiple series. So I'm gonna exit this. Okay, so here are the decks I started with her. We, I worked with her an ABA therapist. We, her, she sent me over a deck. She's working on prompt therapy right now for speech sounds with a different therapist. She is, I'm created a receptive deck for her, a sound discrimination deck, a core song board, an AAC song board, a name practice, and an access practice for her accessing a device. So let's see what that even means. So for her ABA therapist, she sent me this deck because she's really just trying to help her man for items around the house. So this is a ball. She really just, all she has to do is hit the ball. As Find the ball. As I mentioned before, every item for her has to be one hit to submit, meaning she either gets it right or she doesn't. And then it moves on to the next card. This is her prompt deck. So basically we're working on the E mm. sorry, mm sound and then E sound. So every time, you know, she says the mm sound, we're gonna give Elmo a, a fruit or a vegetable or cake or whatever. So that's her um, prompt deck. So she's like, mm, mm, mm. So we recorded the sound mm. and added it in. This is a receptive desk. Um, again, toes. One hit to submit. Toes. Do you see the toes? So if she hits the wrong one. Whoop. Do you see the toes? Okay, so that's kind of that. Um, Fingers. Again, these are all one hit to submit. Um, then this is her. Who says meow? Receptive deck. So we're just kind of working on again. One hit to submit. I'm only showing you all these decks because I'm trying to show you the variety of types of decks you can make. So this is just um, an intro to that. I've kind of created all the different varieties of decks you can make. So here's just 
how they are. So this is, hey, let's learn how to use an AAC device. Want to play Let's Sing Wheels on the Bus? Okay, let's go. So it's going to bring you to a new screen where now you have options of things to say, okay? So for Wheels on the Bus, should we, what should we do? Should we do wipers? Wipers. You know? Um, so again, um, this is kind of that. So it's like intro to AAC, letting her um, build that confidence, work on her expressive language, receptive language, gestures, all of it in one. Um, and then this is kind of something I created for her that I'll show you, hopefully I'll be able to show you guys how to use. It's a little bit more advanced. Um, this deck, she can pick, it's a four choice song deck. It's a, hey, let's learn how to use my AAC device. Um, so she has four favorite songs, Baby Shark, It's You, It's you, Spider, Wheel on the Bus, we just saw an I Love You song. So it's a core word AAC kind of combo. So green means home. So I changed the background of the home page as one color. So I click on Baby Shark, You'll see it has all the core words that go with baby shark. So baby shark. Baby shark. Swims away. And then, it, it, so I basically helped her navigate her core words by using a deck that is fun for her, okay? So she has options. This is the first time in her life she has options of like things to choose and how are we going to express ourselves. So this is like, and how to use AAC deck. Does anyone have any questions so far? Nope. Okay. Do you indicate decks with one hit to submit on boom deck? Do you soar by this? Maybe it would help for kids or teachers looking to this. I strongly agree with that. They actually just hired a developer at boom um, that has more experience with working with children with special needs. So that they hired the developer um, a week ago and he is taking requests for features like this. So if we have feature requests as speech pathologists, you know, to filter by one hit or whatever, they'll, they'll be taking the feature request and I could put, I'll send you guys the URL with um, the feature request um, link in it. So he'll start working on the new features in June. But yeah, right now I, you can't really do that. You could tag it once you publish it, you can pop, put up to 10 tags, but there's no one hit access. So unfortunately, no. But that's a great idea. <laughs> All right. So right, again, this is also one hit to submit. Okay. Sorry, my little screen thing is here. All right. So this is her name, Dylan. Okay. So what this is, so at home, she has an iPad. And that's how she's accessing our sessions. Um, a lot of times, my, a lot of your kids, their parents will have a phone, right? And then they'll also have the screen that they're using there. Um, you're using your um, session with. It's nice that if they, they, you could send them a fast pin, which is a link to what you're doing. So the kid can actually interact a little bit more with you. They could use their phone um, to kind of tap. So this is how this would work. So Dylan is just learning letters and learning to spell her name. The only letter that is correct right now, D, when she hears that is the D. So if I click any of these, nothing will work. Okay, so this is just D. Okay. Why? So the only thing she can click is why. This is kind of helping her build L. that um, understanding of letter and letter sounds. Um, okay, so and on that one hit question, this is just a simple one hit I, game I made. She has, she's not diagnosed with CVI, but I could tell there's some vision stuff going on. So this is a one hit access practice game. So she's learning how to move her hands all over the device. Right now she has like that whole hand on the device thing. Like she's not singularly using her finger. So we're really working on access. So I have different size unicorns that I created for her. So it's just one hit, right? So she gets one hit and they love this noise. I don't know why every kid loves this noise. It's like ding, ding, ding. I got it right. I don't care how old they are. They all love this noise. So this is another form of access. If anyone has any questions, always just feel free to jump in. Okay, that was that. So that's Dylan. Um, the next student I picked up is, his name's Yaz, it's not really his name. He is, um, I took a, a caseload of like, I don't even wanna scare you guys, 25 kids from the Department of Ed of kids that their speech pathologist either had to stop seeing them or something happened. So I picked up all these new students. I've never seen them in real life. It was quite a hot mess for a couple weeks, but <laughs> I figured it out. So this kid has minimal verbal speech. Um, he is five. Um, we had to do an assessment via teletherapy and a progress since April is he's getting an AT eval. 
So with him, he is a kid that's active. He's like bouncing off the walls. He's like jumping, bouncing, jumping, bouncing, biting, whatever he's doing. He just needs to move or be compressed. So he's like very um, sensory and interested in a lot of sensory. So with him, for him, it really works if I send him the fast pin to his mom's phone. So that way she, he could have access to what we're doing and more in a way to interact with the screen better. Um, so for him, I'm showing it on his iPad and he is actually interacting on the phone. So here are the some, here are three of the decks I did with him. One, he did not have an AAC device, okay? And he has no way to really communicate with using verbal speech, he just screams. Um, he, and so of that, we're also, we're gonna expanding his length of phrases, right? And we're also working on like activities, like color boards and things like that. So I'll show you what that means. So with him, I created, basically a ton of these boards for him to use during our session. So I was teaching him the vocabulary as I was working with him like live with mom at home. And she actually has a printer. So she printed some of these out for him, but he was able to stop click on the words on his mom's phone. So I could kind of hear what was going on. So I made him like a little AAC board at home. This is great. Um, for, for kids that are just learning how to use AAC systems. What happens if they only have only have tablet? This has been minimal interaction. There has been some minimal interaction with this. What happens if they only have a tablet as like that's their only device in therapy? Right? Is that what you mean, Marcy? There's some minimal interaction with this. So yeah, yeah. So if they only have a tablet, you have to kind of, I mean, honestly, you have to do your best. So for Zoom, what's nice is there's that annotation feature. So if the annotation, if the child's on Zoom and they only have a tablet and you use Zoom, you could turn on annotation so that whenever they touch the screen with their finger, you'll see it, them annotate your screen. So you'll see where their fingers are going. So I like using Zoom for kids that only have one, um, one, one device, one tablet, I guess. Um, in New York, they just reapproved Zoom. So I don't know how you guys are in your other states, but this is just one thing. But I'm also going to show you another way that you could use it. So if they only have one tablet, for him, I, he loves YouTube videos, okay? So we worked on expanding expression length through YouTube videos. So I see an elephant. I don't know if you guys are familiar with this baby, these bun bun videos. Elephant. But basically, it's like, sorry, it's really loud. It just goes through a series of animals. Screws, blah blah blah, blah blah blah. So this is a it was a great opportunity for him because he would say we were working on it together. I, I see, see elephant, right? So mom would say, okay, he's touching. I see elephant. Every time he touched, I would just click. I see elephant. I see elephant. Okay, good job. Let's go to the next one. All right, and then we would play the video, and then we go to zebra. So this is like in order of the video. There's the zebra. So there's tons of these on things on the internet. You can just kind of help branch in, move the forward phrase through other um, other examples. Keep the cat, anything that just like builds with the same carrier phrase over and over again. Um, the next student is my last one, and then we can go into making decks. His name's Maxi. Another contract position at the school. He's six years old. ASD. Um, he has no clear speech. His soft palate is extremely, extremely long. He has no uvula, really. Um, we had to do an assessment via teletherapy. In terms of the DEX, I, sorry, he also has a touch chat 60, which was not programmed prior to me seeing him. I had to program his touch at 80 virtually. Um, I bumped him up. I was like, this kid's just not using his device because he doesn't want to use it because it's not helpful. Um, he, I had to create an assessment deck for him. Um, I used literacy, literacy shed a lot. I, I don't know if you guys are using a literacy shed. They have so many free resources. I just ended up buying a one that was $30 because I use it for my kids that are, the cognitive levels are all over the place. Um, we did a reading comprehension deck, an inference feelings deck polls and games. So this is kind of what his looks like. So for an assessment deck, oh, that was the, sorry, this was a colors deck I just made for that kid before. So just when we were doing a color activity, he had a place to check. Um, we did the slam cards. I'm sure a lot of you are familiar with them. Um, they're free by Columbia University, the Leaders Project. I use them with, I've used them with every single kid I've started with over teletherapy. I just uploaded them into here so that we can go through one at a time. The goal for these cards is for the kid to retell the story. It gives you the questions to ask them. Could you put these order? Tell me what happened. Why did the bunny jump out of the backpack? 
why why are some students afraid? Da, da, da. So it goes into like this is a theory of mind issue, this is an inferencing issue, this is another, this is a predicting outcome. So for this deck, we just talked through what everything, what happens. He kind of gave me narratives, leaders project, from leaders project, it's Columbia University. Um, we talked through what happened. Um, and then today my graduate student used these decks and she actually added word bubbles. So we um, took turns um, role playing what all the characters were saying. Um, and then they have to put them in order. So I'll say, okay, what happened, you know, first? And I'm like, this one, that one? So then we kind of like click through them um, and hear all the questions. Right now, um, they just, like I created this deck um, by um, Crowley and Biogori, and they announced that it's okay to put it in boom cards. And they actually just created a teletherapy version of it. If you go to their site, you'll see there's like seven decks that they created from preschool to high school that you could use these decks for online. Um, so they're really happy I made the boom cards for them. So <laughs> go get them. Um, and then in terms of the literacy shed, so it's like we watch these videos, they have no words in them, they're amazing for teletherapy. Um, and then afterwards, it's kind of the same thing. I say, what happened first? And then there's a drag and drop feature. Um, we worked on open writing, um, adding um, ING. Um, we worked on coming up with our own words. So I basically just took how Literacy Shed works is it gives you all the, the whole lesson plan and I just parsed it out and put it into boom cards that were a little bit more interactive than a worksheet. So that way we could have more interaction using online. Um, okay, and then here you have to just, I think I skipped a card on boom. So, Oh yeah, there's one thing I forgot. So on the Pete the Cat, I put that here for for a reason. So they actually emailed me at Boom Cards and they were like, you need to tell us where you got that Pete the Cat logo from because I'm ner like, they were nervous I was doing copyright infringement and taking the Pete the Cat logo. They're very, very, very serious about publishing free or not free material that does not belong to the author. So you can create decks for yourself and keep them private, but do not pub publish them to the store. So that's just a warning for everybody when you're making decks that are using work that's not your own. Um, anyway, I made this on like Photoshop. I don't know, it's a horrible graphic of Pete the Cat, but I was like, no, 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 I didn't steal this from anybody. Like, look at this, this is terrible. <laughs> so just to let you guys know. So that's kind of why I just jogged my mind seeing this Mickey Mouse. So this was a private deck I made. Um, it was just a Mickey Mouse short. And then, you know, we just fill in the little blanks. What's the problem? How do you think he was feeling? You know, out of a choice of four. Um, does anyone have any questions so far? Just feel free to ask. Um, and then, then what I was talking about before. So making sure they have a way to answer your question. So and my, I've definitely learned a lot of lessons. So my earlier decks, I didn't have these like little numbers on the bottom because I was just like, oh, which, which emoji is it? Like, tell me. And I just kept hitting the screen over and over. And I was like, oh my God, they need a way to tell me it's one, two, three, or four. So just be mindful of that when you're making materials that the child has to have a way to answer you. If I'm saying what's frustrating, they're like tapping the screen. I'm like, okay, one, two, three, or four. So just little things. How do you create your own graphic? <laughs> oh God, I work, I, I'm on my illustrator. <laughs> so I'm not even gonna go into that today. <laughs> Um, so this was a, uh, so this child, we're working on preference building with his mom. So it's me, mom, and him. So we were taking little polls. Who likes dogs? I like dogs, you know? Who likes cats? Mom likes cats. Maxie likes cats, right? Who likes more? What do we like more? Do we like more cats or dogs? So these kind of poll activities are great because you could just put in anything that the kid likes um, and then go for it. Kids love food. And um, I really... I forgot to tell you this, Hillary. A really easy way for you guys to make graphics is to use emojis because they're free and they love them and they're universal. And you could put emojis anywhere. So I strongly suggest using emojis. Um, and then of course you could use, I, I mentioned before, you could use boom cart, you could use board maker symbols if you buy the $20 subscription. Um, I reached out to PRC and they said it's okay to use their symbols as long as you're not paying for them. So those are two other ways you could use them. And then lesson picks has so many graphics. Um, so you could definitely use lesson picks too. And then I think a lot of um, speech pathologists give away a lot of their graphics for free um, on Teachers Pay Teachers. And also on Boom Card Store, there's a lot of ways you could buy graphics or get graphics for free. 
It's just a simple tic-tac-toe. It's basically that if you look, if I sh I'm going to show you guys in a second, this deck in this deck is the same deck. It's just the background is different. All this is, is it's the exact same deck. So just think about that. So the way you create these, both of these decks are exactly the same. And the last deck, ah, this is not for you. <laughs> I'll show you that in a second. So those are his decks. And then so some of my favorite AAC Bloom accounts, this is what I was gonna show you. This deck from, what's her name? Speech Language League. You guys should take a screenshot of this because it's free. And she I recorded all the voice in it, her voice in it. So it's a great chord board for your kids to have at home. Um, and they, if they have two devices, you know, this is a great example deck. So she used the board maker symbols. Um, and then, yeah, what are yours? Okay. So now we're gonna go into how I make decks. Um, does anyone have any questions before I do? I sent everyone an email that you should start start creating decks or start signing up to create decks. So hopefully everyone was able to create an account. As I mentioned before, you can make unlimited decks until June 30th, okay. And also please just stop me if you have any questions because I know I talk very fast. <laughs> I don't know if it's not, it's not a Floridian thing. It must be a New York thing. Okay. All right. So here's my store. Um, all right. So basically how it works is when you, you click on studio, I don't know if you guys are following along with me or not, but, um, I just want to show you. So we're going to make a deck today for a child who has, um, we'll take a really challenging case. The child who has vision impairment, needs one hit um, and that's it, okay? So let's make a very simple deck. Let me just see, um, someone's chatting me. Yes, okay. So we're gonna go down to make decks. So we're gonna create a new deck. Um, before I do that, I hope you didn't click, you could just see on my screen when I told you about that Mickey Mouse video, it's in my private decks. So those are decks that I created that I haven't shared out to the community because of the copyright. So when you make a deck and you're done with it, you just make sure you press private at the end and not development. If there are graphics that shouldn't be shared on the internet that are copyright, um, copyrighted graphics. So new deck. Okay. So this kid has vision impairment. So I would like to make the deck black background, okay? So the first thing I'm gonna do is go to background here, color, black, okay? This will create a template card for you to use through your whole deck. So now every single time I add a card, it's gonna be black over here on the left. So I add, add, add. Now let's say I didn't wanna do it, Oops, sorry. Can't delete the template card. Let's say I wanted to do like different colors on different um, slides. I'm gonna remove this background for one second. Instead of starting from the template card, just kind of like a template on PowerPoint where everything kind of looks the same, you would wanna start on card one. So right here you would click plus. This card's pretend it's gone. You click plus and on this card, like here, right? Because this is where the red thing is, this is where we're at background is black okay so if i were to create another card now this back background is whatever color i want purple does that want, anyone have any questions so far feel free to turn off your microphone and ask questions because i don't want anyone to feel lost it's okay <laughs> it's okay to have questions <laughs> okay so on this I'm gonna go back to the black card over here. So you could see, I'm gonna zoom in a little bit. Maybe that's more helpful. Okay, so you could see there's a red outline on it. Um, that means this is the deck we're on. So I'm gonna take an image. We're gonna make this real simple. And I'm, you click on it and you drag it in, okay? So now here are some of my images. So we're gonna make an image about two cats, let's just say. So here's my image one. Hey, cat. Okay. Now let's say I wanted to make two of these images. I click on the cat. I click on duplicate right here. Do you see where that is? 
So now it'll duplicate it. Now I have two cats, okay? Oops, I didn't mean to do that, delete, okay? So let's make it like there's two choices. Which one is your cat, Dylan? Let's identify our cat at home, okay? Let's figure out where her cat is. So I'm gonna bring in another image of this cat. Let's say this is her cat and this is not her cat, okay? So the question might be, where is your cat, okay? So we have to have a right and a wrong answer. So this answer is correct. So make sure it's blue around the outside and click correct. This answer is wrong. Okay, so if I press preview, that's kind of how, when you click preview over here, it shows you what the card looks like to the user. Preview. You don't see that there's a right, no, like a right and wrong answer. That was just on the back end. On the front end, you don't see that. So if I said, Dylan, where's your cat? And she clicks this one, it's gonna be wrong. Okay, so she clicks this one, it's gonna be right. Now it goes to that purple part because that was the next one we created. All right, does that, anyone have any questions about that so far? You good? Good, okay. So um, what we're gonna do now, I'm gonna delete, uh, yeah, uh, I don't want everyone to get confused. Uh, I'm gonna create another card down here, so the purple one. So this card, we're gonna put four images on it. We're gonna put an image of, so I bought on Etsy for like a, dollar I think all of these different um, Mickey Mouse graphics and um, here we go Elmo graphics to resize it, you just click on the little thing over here and make it smaller you also excuse me you also can resize it by clicking here size and rotate Let's say I wanted it only, you know, I'm gonna be a little bit small. I'm gonna get 200 by 200. Let's make it a perfect square, okay? I'm gonna put this one up here. Hey, what happened? Okay. So that's how you can resize it, another way to resize instead of just doing what I was doing with the moving around. Blue, the green, and the red. You select the blue to indicate which is correct and automatically acknowledges the green or correct or incorrect. No, you have to make one correct and one correct and one incorrect. So if this is, you have to either make it, it, it doesn't, you have to pick it. You have to correct, um, you have to click correct. What does the blue mean? Oh, it just means that there, once you um, click it, it makes that great thing outline after. Like once you, when it goes ding, there's an outline. Sorry, good question. <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna add four. This is gonna be a little advanced, but I want to show you guys so you don't have to figure out how to do it yourself. So sometimes you'll see a lot of decks where it's like, if you click this, it goes there. If you click this, it goes to this card. If you click this, you see a lot with like those teachers, pay teachers with like S initial, S medial, S final, R initial, R final, and it just like kind of goes all around the screen, okay? So when we're making decks like this, we're gonna take it one more step in advance. So I'm gonna add another card, just to not get us confused here. I'm gonna put in another image. I'm gonna put in this little red guy here. I don't know what this is called, but I'm putting him in. So we're gonna make it conditional format. Let's just pretend that there's like, just duplicating this really quickly. Let's just pretend there's two options on the screen, okay? And if I click this option, it goes to this card. Like your S initial, S final, blah, blah, blah. How we do it is you go to details over here, click on flow magic, okay? Another word that if you don't PowerPoint is conditional formatting, it's the same word. So click on flow magic, okay? Just press okay. Now, when I click on the red guy, okay, link to, see how that blue thing went away? It says link to. Link to, and then you click where you want it to link to, this card. You just click the card, and then it's linked. 
if you didn't, if you were like, oops, I made a mistake right here, you just unclick the link to part. No link. Okay, so that's how you link cards together. So if you're giving a child options like that deck I made for Dylan, where you guys saw this one, this was a link to, right? So this baby shark went to this page, okay? This um, Build in the Bus song went to this page. So that's how you link cards together. All right, so let's try that again. So you click on that image, you press link to, and then you click on the card that you want it to link to. Does that make sense to everybody? Yeah? Okay. Let's make a new type of question. So I'm gonna add another card. I'm gonna make it a background image this time. Ooh, so instead of a color in the back, we're gonna make the background this purple monster. It's really stretched out because it's not the right size. The size for your images is um, a three by four. So it's the ratio of three to four. So if you're looking for images, like Unsplash is a great place to get free images from. Um, they have tons of free images on the internet. Just go to unsplash.com and make a free account. Um, also, if you, we're gonna go to sounds. If you go to Sound Bible, there's a lots of free images on there, uh, for, lots of free sounds on there too. So if you're gonna work on creating sounds, you wanna add sounds into your decks, like animal sounds or whatever, you could use those too. Um, but just remember the ratio is three to four. So if you're looking at the pixels, a three to four ratio would be like 2000 to 1500. Okay, or like 100 to 75. Unsplash. Like, yeah. And sound bible. Okay, so obviously this image is wrong, wrong. <laughs> But I just wanted to throw, show you how to put in, um, instead of a, a color, a background image. Okay, so this is how you put in a background image. Let's find one that's a little bit more, um, okay, obviously you can't publish the Elmo image if you don't own the Elmo image, so I would never publish this deck. <laughs> so just add a, you know, just be careful. So um, let's say Elmo is gonna give us a choice of what to do. So we're gonna give us, four picture choices of what we want to do. So I'm going to drag in multi-picks, which is this one right here. Boom, you have four image options. So over here it says grid, right? That's how many columns, you can have a lot more columns and rows, you just do it right here. And if you want to like delete them, let's say you only want two, you just press um, uh, delete right here. Got it? Delete. Good, yeah, okay, I'm just gonna undo that so I can show you. So in, like how we dragged images before, it's the same thing, you just click on it and add. Click on it and add. Who do you wanna look at? Who should we look at? Click on it and add, click on it and add. So now you have four choices. So if I, send them, obviously it's very small right now, so it's hard to see. I'm just gonna like make this a little bit bigger for us to see. So if I said to you, <clears throat> find the image of Cookie Monster, you're gonna wanna make sure Cookie Monster is correct and these ones are all wrong, okay? You'll see I have a couple of decks that are like find the two that are the same. So if there are two that are the same, you need to make sure that both of them are correct. So if I said find two Cookie Monsters, you would have to make sure that this was correct and this one is correct. I'm not sure if you guys could see it, but there's a green line around the two correct ones right now. And the two wrong ones, there's a red line. So if I were to preview this, I said find the, the two ones that are correct and then click these, Oops. it's wrong, right? So you have to click the two that are correct. Now for our kids that are one hit, this would not be a good game because they need to click both of them to submit. So there's two answers. So if there's two answers, it's not a good game for kids that need one hit to correct, to continue. A better game would be find the one that's different, okay? Because then if there's one that's different, then they could click on it and then they would advance the next card. So let's go back to that. Let's make it find the one that's different. So I'm gonna remove this guy and I'm gonna put in this guy, this guy, and this guy. So the one that's different is technically the correct one because that's the one we want them to answer, right? So the other ones are all wrong. So these are all wrong and this one is correct. So 
So this one is the green. Got it? So let's preview it again to make sure it works. So if I click this one, it's wrong. One click, wrong, okay? If I click this one, it's right. And it will advance you to the next card. Something to note um, when making your cards is making sure that, so I'm gonna go back up to details over here, is that your cards are not randomized if you don't want them to be randomized. That way, if they're in order, like if you're working on Peep the Cat and it's like white shoes, red shoes, blue shoes, brown shoes, white shoes, I mean, if you, I mean, you only speak pathology if you actually know that. So if it's like that order, right, for Peep the Cat, you don't want it to be randomized because if you're going through the song with the kid, you don't want it to all of a sudden be brown and then blah, blah, blah. So make sure that the randomized cards thing is not clicked. Okay, so make sure that one's off. And someone was asking about the one hit right here for keywords, you could put in one hit here. Like that way people can access and find your decks easier. Um, and then you could put in, in the subject area, you want to put speech, speech therapy. The about, the description of your activity, acknowledgements. If you use Unsplash, like I mentioned before, or Sound Bible for sounds, I'll get there in a second, you would put the acknowledgements in there. And then to sell on Teachers Pay Teachers, they'll create a link for you. A caveat on Teachers Pay Teachers and Boom Cards. So I never had it any stores or anything at all. I just, I don't have time for this. The only reason I started creating all these Boom Cards is because most of my kids use AAC, it's all very digital. I was like, I need something that they could touch, interact with. Um, so I listed them on the Boom store for like 75 points, which is like 60 cents. Um, but Boom will take, obviously takes a percentage of your sales. So if you're selling Boom cards, be mindful of that. If you put them on Teachers Pay Teachers, Teachers Pay Teachers takes, I put one on for $2. I got, off, I got 80 cents on Teachers Pay Teachers payout. And then Boom cards takes an additional percentage off that. So just a warning <laughs> that your hard work might go real far down with um, all the combination of using both of them together. So just a thought. Um, you could also use that link if you had like your own store. Um, okay, so in terms of sound, let's make another card. How do you engage only the target to match to? Could you just turn your mic on so I could talk to you about that? Hi, Claire. <laughs> it wasn't me asking the question. Oh, okay. <laughs> Claire and I were <laughs> <back up. laughs> I am grateful for boom cards and you. <laughs> What's the question? Can you make it larger so we can see it? For oh. us people that are going blind? It's hard because when I zoom in it, like, it, like I think my screen is distorted or something. I was asking, no sorry, how you enlarge the, just the one target to match. So like if the target is match this guy and then you have all the selections on the bottom. Yes. Okay. So let's do that. So I'm going to just, rem I'm, uh, we're going to make a different card. Okay. Just forget that. So I'm going to add a card here. Forget the background. Let's put the, drag the image to the top that you want. Okay. That's the image you want. Here's the cat, okay? Ugh, make him a little bit smaller. We're not gonna make this cat correct or wrong. It's just gonna be an image, okay? So if I were to preview this, you, nothing, you can't click on this cat. This is just an image right now. So I'm gonna bring in other images and make those images correct and those images wrong. So if I bring in another cat picture, let's just say, Here's one here. I'm just gonna duplicate it for the, I like to duplicate things because it makes the size the exact same every time versus like drag, dragging another image. Then I don't have to resize it every time. <clears throat> so now, oh, which one matches the top cat? So you have correct and wrong. Is that better? Does that make sense? Yeah, you could also just pull in the multi images and do it that way as well. Okay. So I did a deck like this for a child recently who's doing partner assisted scanning. So she's learning to listen to her choices because she has um, Serge Weber. So she has a lot of brain-based vision, uh, brain vision disorder basically. Um, and we did this with sound. So the top sound was the sound that I was looking for and the bottom three were the choices. 
So I could show you how to do that also. I didn't want to bring in every single deck I ever created because I thought it might be a bit overwhelming. Oops. Um, but let's do that. So for sounds, I told you guys you could use um, Sound Bible. It has free as long as it, you know, there's a lot of free sounds. I've recorded myself saying so many sounds on my computer. I use the voice notes app on my phone and it just like syncs to my computer or you could just send yourself every time you make a voice note, like share it to yourself. You can email it to yourself. So that way um, you'll have the voice notes easily on your computer. So I can be like more, mom, ball, uh, 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 and I just send them to myself. So you're just, just like we dragged an image in we're gonna drag sound in. So we're gonna click sound, we're gonna drag it in. And then here are all my 11 pages of sounds I've created. Oh no! Probably pee the cat. Probably pee the cat. So, so yeah. So that's that's kind of how you do sound. And then it is exactly the same way. We can make it correct, wrong, same thing. Um, so you also could put just put the sounds on a card. Let's say let's change this to a dog. Oh wait, where is the? Hold on. Cat. <laughs> so right here, down here is where the sound properties are. If you want it to be autoplay, meaning as soon as the card opens, it plays it, you click autoplay on the sound. Okay. Some a lot of speech therapists, especially doing prompt therapy, they don't like to do autoplay because part of the fun of doing it is getting them to say the sound. So as soon as they say the sound, then you click on the sound to play. So you may, depending on the child, you may not want to use the autoplay feature, um, just a thought. So I'm gonna pretend this is autoplay and then as soon as I, I'm gonna drag in another image of a cat. I love these cat images. <laughs> so, and I'm gonna make this the correct image. So we're gonna, this is a receptive desk, okay? So let's press preview. Cat. Find the cat. Okay, that's it. <laughs> Yay! Okay. So the thing that's really annoying about these sounds is that they're all black. They all look like this. There's no way you can change this. The only thing you could do is make it 0% opacity, basically. 0%. So you can fudge around with this a little bit. Just be careful you don't lose it. <laughs> so if you like, if it's like a click to play and you're doing this, you have to know that it's over here somewhere. Cat. Got it. <laughs> it's a bit weird. So um, you can make a border around the item, let's just say. Like we can make a little border around here. Oh, I made the, op the opacity zero, so that's why you don't see it. But yeah. So yeah, just be careful I don't lose sounds. I usually use that feature where I turn the, the brightness of this image all the way down if it's an autoplay because like you don't really need to see that. Also, when you do do boom, there's this little thing up here. Whoops. That means your sound's off. So if you click that, you could just turn the sound off. So if you do have a deck that's autoplay and you don't want it, you could just click that thing up there. Does anyone have any specific questions or cases they have a question on how to make a card for? I, I think some know. of the kids that I'm working with are like higher level. So like I want to do more, mm, um, you know, not um, to extend their language. So I don't know if it's possible to like do phonics kind of cards. Like, do you want to, yeah. Do you want to look at one of the decks I made for a kid that is eight? Yeah, that'd be great. So it's a private deck because I didn't want to share the um, material. So you guys know Scary Squirrel and Epic, I'm sure. Uh, Scary Squirrel, it's like a series on Epic Reader. Okay, so we read the book together. I always ask this, did you like it or not? I love to ask this question. Did you like it or not? So I put that one in. This is also, there's no right or wrong answer. It's just like a visual reminder for me. So for this deck, um, it's a care, it's a story mapping. Um, so each of the, I copied this, um, image 
from a Teachers Pay Teachers um, image, and I just pasted it into my deck. And here are the three parts of the story I'm asking a child, the beginning, the middle, and the end. Okay, I'm just gonna remove these. This is a good question because I forgot to show you this feature. Okay, so each of these areas I made, let's start from the beginning. I'm just gonna delete all this so that, let's start from the beginning. So I brought in these three images, I dragged them in. I also dragged in this image. So there's four images on this page. Okay, I want these images to link to the specific areas of the card, beginning, middle, and end. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a button. It's similar to an image. I'm gonna bring a button in for the beginning. I'm gonna make a, bring a button in for the middle, and I'm gonna bring a button in for the end, okay? The thing is, if you were to play this right now, you would see it's a button in gray and black. So like, that's not what I want. So I'm gonna make these buttons the same size as the area, okay? I'm not gonna do all of them, we'll just try one. You want the background color to be transparent, okay? And you want the border to be gone, transparent also. Okay, so if I were to play this deck right now, I'm gonna press preview. You'll see that this, this is that button. Okay, so there's nothing really there except for the outline if I drag my mouse over it. So the beginning, I'm just gonna let you know, the beginning one is this one right here. So I'm gonna make this image draggable and I'm gonna make this button the drop zone for that so they connect. You're gonna take your mouse on the purple little circle here and you're gonna drag it to the purple flag that it belongs to. So now they're linked. I'm gonna make these ones draggable too, since these are all of our choices, okay? I'm going to preview. So let's pretend I was, I thought that was this one was the beginning and I press submit, Oops. it obviously is wrong. So it's this one, that's the beginning. Oops, Oops. wait, what happened? Is that the one I said? Oops. You did. Yeah, you have not found all the correct answers. Oops. I must have, oh, yep. I made the two buttons also correct. Hold on. Sorry, I don't want to get cheesy, guys. <laughs> so I didn't, um, on that deck, I didn't go back to it. See how there's green around these two buttons? I didn't, I, you need to not make them correct, okay? They're going to be dra drop zones, okay? So now it's not a correct or wrong thing like they were before. So now these are all drop zones for different images. I hope that wasn't confusing. Did, I, did you guys understand that or do you want me to repeat that again? I guess the question I have for that is if there's, if you're not linking a correct button and you just have this drop zone, mm -hmm. are they, is there going to be a click acknowledging the correct one if they misplace it? Yes, as long as they, all of these buttons are drop zones too, or there's no other buttons on here. So let's just remove these buttons real quick. Since we've made all of these draggable and this is the only drop zone, okay, let's do that example. Oops. Wrong. Okay, does that make sense? Correct. Does that make sense? Yeah. Do you want me to repeat it? I think I got it. So since this is the only, this is the drop zone and this is the one that's linked to it. Right, right, got it. You could also make it like they're all the right answer and in that way you, you press a, allows everything. Okay, that's, yeah, I guess that was the discrep discrepancy that I wanted, thank you. This one over here, mm. this has a drop zone of allow everything. So it just allows everything in. Okay, so this Elmo dude, you could literally put anything in and it's all correct. So if I press submit, it's all right. Okay, so you can make it so the whole thing is all correct. So that's one idea for like story order. Um, what was your favorite part of the story? So in terms of characters and setting, um, these ones are fill in the blanks. Okay, so you drag in a fill in the blank, right? I'm gonna just delete this one so I can show you how to use it. You drag in fill in the blank, double tap to edit, 
you can make it like let's say you're doing a math problem not that we do math but let's say you're doing a math problem the answer is five okay that is the answer submit so you write the answer in first we don't we're speech pathologists we don't do that we're open response okay so i i'm just going to click open response meaning they can kind of put in whatever they want all right um if you want to make it case sensitive you can make it case sensitive if you work on lowercase letters if you want to make it the exact sentence, you can make it case sensitive. You just unclick open response. You always want to click multi-line too. Otherwise it creates literally one line across the whole thing. Multi-line will fill up the whole box. Um, what else? This is another um, fill in the blank. This is kind of what you were asking um, before about this is the one answer that goes in the box and this one's wrong. So what happened in the beginning? Um, what else? Here's another drop zone. This is the drop zone up here. And these are the choices. I just wrote, these are buttons that I wrote in. So I just drag a button over. Oops. I drag a button over. Here's my button. Let me do that again. I took a button, I dragged it in and I wrote in it. Answer. Okay, and then I just made the background pink and I linked it to the answer to the drop to the drop zone. So I just made this one draggable and then I could link it to the top. So now this one has two answers. Okay, this is more fill in the blanks. More. What if you wanted to put them in numerical order like to sequence them. To sequence like a story, what happens? Yeah, like how you were saying, um, like in in that particular lineup, because I don't know if, because before you had the, the box choices, but do you see how you have those spatial yeah. areas? Mm -hmm. Like, can you fit them into the? Yeah, I'm gonna go to a different part to show you. This is um, a literacy shot activity. So this activity is basically that. What happened first, second, third, and fourth? So I made each of the answer choices, the numbers, and then the bottom ones I put in the sentences. So you could just drag them into each correct one. Okay, cool. There's a prettier way to do this, but I'm just a little bit lazy. <laughs> <laughs> and then for story order for this one, um, I just have the child described to me and then as they're going, I click it and it just makes a circle around it. And I, I just give them the feedback right there. This one also has open writing in it. This one, um, this is a worksheet, right? So there, these ones are, I dragged in the fill in the blank. I'm so sorry. It's, you're going to hear like fireworks. The alarms are going off in New York at seven o'clock. Everyone's clapping for the heroes. Um, so for these ones, you, these are all fill in the blank, but they're, Precise. So open plus ing is opening. Okay, so it's not a free response. So even though these are all fill in the blank, if I click on it, the answer is opening. So that's what I put in as what the child needs to say to get it correct. Right. So it's like this plus this equals this. The answer is the, oh, the answer is opening. The total. Yeah, yeah. So if you looked at it, if you were the child, it would look like this. Yeah. Okay. Got it. Yeah. Um. I think those are pretty, I mean, I don't know how, and here's another example of a story order. So I put a one, two, three, four, five on the top, and then we talked about which one's first, second, which word is first, second, third, fourth, and they're all linked to each corresponding box. So again, these are, I made these all draggable, all these little buttons, and all these ones up here, I made the drop zones, and I just connected the purple to the purple. Um, again, this is a writing task open writing, demand the book, the butterflies. Yeah. Do you guys have any other questions? Do I ever import materials from PowerPoint and Google Slides? No, you can though. There is a tutorial on their YouTube of how to do that. I just haven't done it yet. Anyone else? Anyone else? Okay. Well, feel free if you have any questions to ask now. If not, it was a pleasure having you guys. I really hope you learned something. Um, and if you need any help, you could always reach out to me. You have my email. 
I'm more than help. I've helped so many speech pathologists help um, break down and go through these. Um, I've spent hours of my time helping other speech pathologists after work, creating decks for their students. I'm more than willing to help you. I know that this is really stressful. I happen to be very good at technology. Side story about Rebecca is I worked at a tech startup for seven years while I was in grad school part-time as a speech pathologist. So I have a lot of experience in the whole IT world. <laughs> So anyway, all right. Well, it was a pleasure having you guys and I hope you have a nice night. Thanks for um, coming in after work. Thanks, Thank Rebecca. You. Bye. Bye. That was awesome.